In this video, I'll uncover why you're getting those nasty leg cramps and what you can do to make them go away. Have you ever woke up in the middle of the night to just having nasty leg cramps? Or maybe you're just, you know, sitting in the chair, minding your own business, and all of a sudden your foot just seizes up. And of course, it's incredibly painful. A lot of people are having this issue and they don't know what to do about it. So that's why in this video, we're gonna talk about leg cramps five causes and five cures. And this is something that a lot of people are facing and they don't have an answer to. So that's why we're gonna give you the answers today. Stick around to the end of this video, but before we get started, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification and join our notification community. And I'm gonna be able to help you excel your health and your life. Also wanna mention in the description below, I have the five keys to weight loss. This is a complimentary download of the top things that I have found clinically that really help people lose some of that way. So go ahead and download that for free right here in the description below. Let's go ahead and talk about leg cramps because like I said, this is something that a lot of people are having an issue with. So the first question is, what is happening here? Why is this happening? So when we look at leg cramps, essentially what they are is an involuntary muscle contraction. Okay, you're sitting there minding your own business. All of a sudden, your foot is just in agonizing pain, a sharp pain that you can hardly tolerate. And you know, this is something, like I said, many people are facing. It's very, very painful. And if you have experienced this, you know what I'm talking about. Now, when we look at cramping, it's happening for a reason. That's important to understand because there's a lot of resources out there that tell you, well, if you're having cramping, that's just you know the new way of life. That's what you have to live with. And the truth is, is it's happening for a reason. We have to figure out, first of all, why, because it could be very detrimental to your health as to why it's happening, but also it could be a very simple fix. And if it's a very simple fix, why live life dealing with that issue? And so we have to figure out why it's happening and find a solution for it, which we're going to talk about the solutions today. And then when we look at the cramping too, it commonly occurs in the calves and the feet. Now the calves are going to be one of the major areas this happens all the time when it's happening in the legs, but it also will happen in the feet quite often. A lot of times when you're having some of these different imbalances in the body that's causing the cramping, it's happening as a, it, it's happening in attacking those small muscle groups first. And we look at the foot, lots of little tiny muscles in there that are going to be affected first. Next here is a lot of times you're going to find that it's happening at night. Okay. You know, I remember back when my wife was pregnant, she would have just awful muscle cramps at night. When I was playing sports at a high level, I'd have awful muscle cramps at night. And so it happens at night for a lot of people. Let's go ahead and talk about one of the first reasons. And we're gonna go through this in order of most likely to least likely as to why leg cramps are happening for you. So first reason is gonna be dehydration, okay? This is something that happens to a lot of people. You know, if you're like me, you're going, you're working throughout the day, you're running from point A to point B, and sometimes you just forget to drink water. You know, a lot of times when I'm in the clinic and I'm going from room to room and I just have a packed schedule for like six hours straight, I will literally go like that whole span of time without drinking water, being very physically active, and then all of a sudden it hits me really hard. Typically, I know I have a big problem and that I messed up when I wake up the next morning with a massive dehydration hydration headache because I didn't drink enough water the night before and the day before. Now, when it comes to the water, a lot of people ask, well, how much water should I drink on a daily basis? The rule of thumb is going to be 40 to, or to, 40 to 60 percent of your body weight in ounces. So let's say this. Let's say that you weigh 140 pounds. You're going to drink 70 ounces of water a day. Now, I have a sliding scale of 40 to 60 percent. And the reason for it, because it all depends on you, right? Are you physically active? Do you have a desk job? Do you have a job that's manual labor? Are you exercising throughout the day? There's a lot of variables. In there. So we want to make sure that we take these variables into account so we're getting proper water because a lot of times you're finding this fixed number as in this is what you need to drink every single day and that's not the case. Everybody's living a different life. Now a couple signs I want to mention here of dehydration. Okay, First is going to be headaches like I tell you that I get when I get dehydrated. Constipation is also an issue. Brain fatigue, dry mouth, and this is one of the early signs that you can tell right away. I always look for this sign. If I have a really dry mouth, it means, hey, I better get some water flow in here. Otherwise, I'm going to have some issues. Bright yellow urine. And that's not from like taking vitamins. And then you had bright yellow urine. It's simply like, you know, you didn't have any vitamins or anything. And your urine is bright yellow as a result of dehydration. And then muscle cramping, which this what this whole presentation is about. So if you're getting that, that's what you have to really understand. Those are the signs of dehydration. Make 
make sure you increase your water intake, but sometimes water isn't enough, okay? I run into this problem a lot with people. What does this mean? Well, the thing is, is that if you're drinking good purified water like I do and like I promote for everybody to do, what happens? Guess what? All the electrolytes, all the minerals get stripped from it. And we're not just talking about distilled water, we're talking about pretty much any really good quality purification process that's taking out very small chemicals, small size chemicals like fluoride or arsenic. They're very difficult to get out of water. So when you have a, a purification system that's capable of getting them out, they're taking everything out. So the thing is that we have to do, we have to understand is that sometimes it's not just about drinking more water, it's about making sure you're getting more electrolytes because this electrolyte balance, as you're going to see, is gonna cause a lot of problems. I use an electrolyte powder daily. I'll put a link in the description to the one that I'm using in order to help me stop with the muscle cramps. Because here's the thing, a lot of people have electrolyte deficiencies and they're eating low carb, they're eating keto, they're doing the best they can with their diet. They're putting in solid effort, but it's you know causing electrolyte deficiencies for a whole different reason. And we have to be aware of that. Let's talk about electrolytes. One of the major, major reasons that you're going to get cramping, okay? It's kind of connected with the dehydration issue, but it also, you know, the electrolytes play an enormous role in your overall health. And if you're having an electrolyte imbalance or even a depletion of them, which many people do in modern society, like I said, even following a good healthy diet, like the keto diet, low carb, it's going to cause electrolyte depletion in many ways. Now, another reason a lot of people have electrolyte de depletion is because of the stressful lifestyles that we live. When you have cortisol that's risen up in the body, when we have adrenal dysfunction, then it's gonna cause electrolyte imbalances. Here's some of the foods that you can get some great electrolytes from. Now, of course, these are the top electrolytes too, that most people run into having an issue with. Sodium right here is a major one. We can simply get this from sea salt. We can get this from pink salt. Uh, we can also get it from beet, spinach, chards, and also artichokes. Those are some good food sources. Of course, there are more, but here's some good options here. I'm gonna give you a few good options for all of them. Potassium is a major one a lot of people are struggling with as well. Like I said, it's due to the stressful lifestyle and because of the keto and low carb diet. This is why a lot of people are having potassium issues and it's incredibly important for your overall health. Avocados are an incredible source for this. Bananas, potatoes, both white potatoes and sweet potatoes, spinach and then white beans are a great source as well. Um, calcium is another major issue and I prefer people get calcium from like their food source simply because you know in modern science a lot of times when we look at taking calcium and supplement, supplementing with them, it's kind of hard to know where that calcium's going. Is it being laid down in arteries? Is it going to the bones? Is it you know going for the to support the muscle function? It's hard to tell. So getting calcium from foods is going to be important instead of taking some high dose calcium supplement. Uh, seeds are a great source, chia seeds, that kind of thing. Uh, Grass-fed dairy like yogurt and um, cheese, and then sardines as well. The truth is, when it comes to sardines, many people don't like them, but hate to tell you. Yeah, they're a really great source of collagen and many other very beneficial nutrients that your body needs in order to survive and function well. So sardines are great, and then beans and lentils as well. Now, magnesium, it's another major area that a lot of people are having uh, issue with. This particular mineral is something that so many people are depleted in. Nuts are a great source. Let's think of almonds, cashews, dark chocolate is an incredible source. I know that you're totally hooked on boosting up your magnesium uh, levels after this because you're gonna just start eating a whole bunch of dark chocolate. Bananas, leafy greens, and avocados. Now, when you see this theme here, a lot of times we're looking at leafy greens being a great source. We're thinking kale, spinach, romaine lettuce, avocados, um, beans and lentils. Those are bo both great sources as well. So you're going to find a lot of these same foods are going to be mineral rich. So make sure that you're getting proper electrolytes. I can't stress this it's enough. This is a major issue as to why people are having this problem. I recently had a patient and she was saying, you know what? It runs in my family. My mom has this issue and I have this issue and I've had it for years. And I said, um, yeah, just try this electrolyte powder. I'm pretty sure it's going to solve your issues. And she thought I was a miracle worker, but truthfully, it's just she had an electrolyte balance and apparently she's had one for many years. And so it's uh, solved now, but just make sure that like if you're suffering from an electrolyte imbalance, you are working to solve it. Next is going to be overexertion. Okay. So 
most cases, you know, if you overexerted yourself, you had a big long run, you did a heavy workout, you're getting incredible muscle cramping. Well, first thing we can do is stretch, okay? A lot of people forget to stretch, right? Because a lot of people, they go in, they do the workout and they're like, well, you know, I'm getting great results when I'm working out, but you know, who's got time for that stretching stuff? Well, let me tell you, if you're not stretching, first of all, you are going to um, cause yourself to not get as good of results. You're going to um, really mess up your workouts and then you're going to have more risk of injury, which you're not going to be working out at all if that's the case. And so we got to make sure we're stretching. Heat and ice are both great. I like just using simple uh, infrared heat. It's one of the most powerful, you know, healing heats out there. Um, ice is great too, taking an ice bath. We used to do this in hockey all the time. We'd uh, fill the tub at the hotel full of ice cubes and fill it with water, jump in. And that's how we would uh, be able to go and do um, double headers. So ice baths, ice showers, ice packs, that kind of thing, all very good. And then Epsom salt soaks as well. I have patients do this all the time. You know, if they're coming in, they have really bad muscle spasms and, and just musculoskeletal issues in general. It's great to take an Epsom salt bath. You just go to a local pharmacy, a local grocery store, get a big old bag of salt, put about two cups into a bath, soak in warm water. And most people don't complain because they love that anyway. And when they get that high dose of magnesium, it's very you know healing towards the entire body, the nervous system, the musculoskeletal system. It'll stop a lot of the spasms as well. So a great solution there. Next is medications, okay? Now, here's the deal. If you're someone who is st has started some sort of medication, all of a sudden you notice you're t having a ton of muscle cramps, you gotta go to your doctor and let them know. Because what happens is a lot of these different medications, they'll mess with your pH, they'll mess with your physiology, your electrolyte balances, and they will cause you to have muscle cramps. Here's a couple of the common ones that we see a lot. Birth control pills, diuretics, naproxen, statins, and albuterol. These are all very common ones. Now, there's many more as well. I'm not here to teach on medication but I'm here to tell you that the thing is about many medications is that they can cause cramping. So you just need to talk to your doctor about it and ask him if it's a reason as to why you're having this issue. Next is gonna be health conditions. There's a lot of different health conditions out there that are going to cause you to have a lot of different muscle cramps and spasms all over your body, especially in the legs. So first of all, nerve compression issues is a major one. I can't tell you how many times people have come in, they're like, you know, holding on to their arm. Oh, my arm's killing me and I'm getting this really bad spasms and there I'm getting it in my legs and my calf. And it turns out that they have some sort of spinal det deterioration, some disc degeneration, that nerve is compressed. And so we want to make sure that if you have a spinal issue and you're getting nerve compression, you are taking the appropriate steps and taking care of that. Going to a chiropractor, going to somebody who's going to help you with that is going to be very important. Um, liver disorders is a major one. You know, if you have cirrhosis of the liver, if you're someone who has fatty liver, this can all play a role in electrolyte disorders. Uh, kidney dysfunction as well, it's a major one. And then hypothyroidism, Deep vein thrombosis, this is more serious because those deep vein thrombosis can essentially go and break off, go to your lungs, go to your heart, go to your brain, and they can cause major, major health crises for you. So this is very serious. If you're getting a lot of uncontrolled cramping, definitely go see your doctor over that. Next is adrenal disorders. Essentially, when your adrenals are having serious issues and your cortisol's all over the place, what can happen is you will just dump a lot of different electrolytes, potassium, sodium in particular, and as a result, you'll get some serious electrolyte imbalances. And so if you're getting like a blood test and you're checking your electrolytes, it can be a good indication based on those electrolyte levels as to whether or not there's some adrenal dysfunction occurring. Alcoholism is a big one, and then also vitamin deficiencies, okay, vitamin B deficiencies, vitamin D deficiencies. Many of these vitamins can play a role as to pH balance, electrolytes in the body, and the whole deal. So make sure that you're taking all this into account when you're getting these leg cramps. Give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends who are all getting these nasty leg cramps, and put in the comment section below your experience with having leg cramps, the solutions to them, and what you did about them. And then check out this video over here that's really gonna put you on the fast track to losing belly fat. Because you know what? When you are someone who is obese, if you're overweight, your risk of heart disease goes way up.